All right, welcome everyone to the 2024 UCR Staff Conference. We're so thrilled to have you join us today. Uh, a few helpful notes in case you've never attended an event on Zoom events before. Uh, each session is being recorded and will be posted on UCR's learning management system. If you would like closed captions for this session, please click on the show closed captions button at the top of the screen. While you can use the chat to interact, please submit your questions using the Q&A feature, not the chat. This will allow other folks to vote for questions they'd like to have answered. Um, and let's give it a few more minutes for everyone to join the session. And then we'll get started. All right. Oh, I still see a few more people joining. And if you're just joining us, just a reminder, uh, please use the chat function to communicate with one another, but please use the Q&A to submit any questions that will allow everyone to vote up the questions that they'd like answered. Okay, so welcome everyone. I'd like to introduce our speaker, Hung Wu. Hung joined UC Riverside in October of 2022 and is the wellness coordinator who manages the faculty and staff wellness program. Prior to UCR, Hung was a US Army veteran and received his Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology from Cal State Fullerton and his Master of Healthcare Administration from Colorado State University. Hung has launched and managed worksite wellness programs in the medical, transportation, energy, hospitality, and automotive industries. Most notice, notably, Hung has launched and managed worksite wellness programs for the MGM Resorts International Properties and the Venetian Palazzo Hotel and Casino, helping over a thousand employees with their well being. Hung is passionate about health and wellness and is compassionate with staff and faculty who struggle with thriving in their well being. Thank you, Kate. And Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, oh. All right. Uh, and I'm pleased to introduce Hung Wu. Thank you, Kate. Good morning, everyone. As Kate mentioned, my name is Hung Wu. I am the wellness coordinator who manages the faculty and staff wellness program. Uh, PowerPoint, please, Kate. All right. Today, we will be discussing and presenting self-care for busy professionals. Next slide, please. In this presentation, we will explore the importance of self-care and the benefits of practicing self-care every day. We will discuss practical strategies that can be easily incorporated into your daily routine, share different perspectives in self-care, provide tools to help you manage stress, improve productivity, and enhance overall well-being. We will also perform two wellness activities. So let's get ready and go into the Self-Care for Busy Professionals presentation. Next slide, please. First wellness activity that we will be performing is the Mindful Meditation Exercise. This will be a two-minute exercise where we will try to focus on our, not only on our breathing, but allow us to practice this type of modality for our own personal well-being. Before we begin, a few tips. Make sure you sit on the edge of your chair or on the middle of your seat pan. As you're sitting, make sure your back is straight, but not stiff. What I don't want you to do is try to contract 
and try to tighten up your upper body to make sure to think that you have a nice tall back. We don't want that. What I want you to do is have a tall back, but still feel relaxed and comfortable. If you need support, roll up a towel or a t-shirt behind your back and the backrest in case that you do have some fatigue or perhaps you have some limitations with your lower back. Once you're settled in the seating position and you're upright, allow your chin to drop slightly and gaze downward at a point in front of you. Once you establish that head positioning, make sure your feet are flat on the ground or flat on a footrest. You wanna keep your foot connected with that ground. And lastly, let your arms fall naturally to the sides, placing your palms on top of your thighs, letting it rest. If at any time this specific pose becomes too uncomfortable, feel free to take a break, readjust yourself, and then go back into that exercise, okay? As we begin, I want everyone to think about and encourage you, use your breathing patterns as your focal point. As you breathe in out, feel, think, use that sensory in your brain of feeling the amount of breath, the duration of breath, the intensity of the breath. Breathe in and out through your stomach, not through your chest. You may also hear some sounds as you inhale and exhale, and that's okay. That sound is part of the breathing process. One last tip before we perform this movement or exercise. Wandering mind. We're very distracted. Most of us might be going at 100 miles per minute, including myself. This is a good opportunity to slow things down. So if you have distractions, things come through as you're doing this exercise, accept them, allow them to come, and they will leave as quickly as they came in, refocusing on your breath, okay? So without further ado, we shall go ahead and try the two minute mindful meditation exercise, okay? Everyone in their position, positions, and I would also help if you close your eyes while doing this, and begin. Continue to focus on your breathing, breath in and out. Feel your shoulders dropping, your arms relaxing, still maintaining a good posture, but you're not stiff and you're not too relaxed. Take a few more deep breaths in and out. As you do so, go ahead and open up your eyes. In the chat box, feel free to share your feedback. What was your experience like? How did this two minute mindful meditation exercise make you feel?
guest list, glad it makes you feel relaxed, relaxed and calm. Thank you, Mary. I myself felt rejuvenated, increased mental acuity, the ability to let go of distractions and conflict. Peaceful, thank you, Becky. Celine, excellent, a little more detail to that. It brought you back to the present moment. That's where the mindfulness concept came into this exercise too. Thank you, everyone. I'm hoping that this exercise itself felt just as great for everyone, including myself too. Next slide, please. So what is self-care? That's been a thought that's been floating around for many, many years. Most recently, this past year, there's been a lot of communication, a lot of promotion, marketing on self-care activities, self-care products. But is self-care just eating a healthy meal or performing a few stretches? Yes and no. I will explain more in, um, in detail later on in the presentation. See, self-care is more than just performing certain activities. It is a modality designed to improve your well-being. There are numerous benefits with practicing self-care. Some of these benefits are an increased capacity to manage stress. Every day, we may be overwhelmed with stressors, and self-care may help us increase our capacity to manage stress and increase our resilience to the stressors without overloading our mental and emotional health. Self-care can also develop skills and knowledge to thrive in your well-being. Beyond performing individual activities, think of self-care as a system. Our mind and body functions as one unit. When one part of our body is injured, inflamed, or stressed, the rest of the body is affected. Self-care can also create or maintain positive connections and relationships with family, friends, and colleagues, and your community. Self-care can also help us improve our positive outlook, and in turn, create a positive environment to foster healthy relationships and connections with those you love and surround yourself with. Next slide, please. Now we will perform a waterfall exercise. For those who do not know what a waterfall exercise is, it is a communication or a chat type of exercise. So in the chat box, answer the question, what self-care activities do you do enjoy and why? But do not click send until I say so. Be really interested to see the responses from everyone here in this workshop on what type of self-care activities you enjoy and why. Please enter your answers in the chat box. Don't click send yet. I will give everyone one minute to do so. Okay, at this time, everyone hit enter. Whoa, and welcome to a waterfall. We got a waterfall full of answers in the chat box. A lot of commonalities, walking, hiding, fresh air, manicures, that is true, and manicure and pedicure is a great self-care self -care activity. Swimming, fellow swimmer, I love to swim. Massages, great activity to do because we definitely want to release some of that muscle tension that we experience day in and day out. Yes, Lacey, spending that unregulated time with family. No restrictions, just being in present home with family. Definitely, absolutely. Yoga, playing card games, reading, love to read. Gardening, excellent. Walking, Wordle, interesting, Ariana. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for providing some of your answers. 
Excellent. These are all great self-care activities. Next slide, please. This slide, I do want to implore you to think about how do you approach self-care? Now, the activities you just listed, they're all great. They help replenish you, rejuvenate you, help you remove some of that stress you might be experiencing, some of that tension. But do you perform these self-care activities in response to a stressful situation? Or do you perform self-care activities from a preventive perspective? Think of how we approach medical care. Do we wait until something happens to our body before we go see a doctor? Quite frankly, most of us, yes. Or flip side, do we work on our current lifestyle, identify areas we're going, where we can improve on, making sure that we do the best that we can to prevent muscular skeletal injuries, prevent comorbidities or health conditions. And this is where we're gonna discuss the perspectives in self-care. Oftentimes we do also perform self-care activities in response to a self stressful situation, such as may have a conflict during work, perhaps an argument, a unfavorable meeting that happened. You leave for the day, you may go to yoga class, do a quick workout, eat a healthy meal or not a healthy meal, or get a massage. Again, great activities to perform. They may help us with our well-being at that moment. But it is a perspective to self-care that can help us thrive in our well-being or increase our level of burnout. So as you can see on the slide, there are two columns. The left column is a self-care perspective that is a response to a difficult situation. The right column is a self-care perspective that is prevented, focusing on the whole you. As you view the slides, what comes to mind? What are your thoughts? No need to share in the chat box, but I definitely want you to think about, what are you thinking when you see the slides? The left-hand column, does that sound familiar? We respond to a lot of our stressors, our situations. And the right side, you see the outcome of looking at it from a holistic perspective, a preventive approach. Why? Or our body functions as a cohesive system with each part serving a distinct purpose. When one part is injured, it impacts the entire body. For example, imagine this. Limitations on the ankle, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion, eversion. If there are limitations, it can alter your movement patterns. If you can't have full mobility of your ankle, how do you think you're gonna walk? Are you gonna walk normally and optimally? Or is it going to be adjusted and modified because of that ankle? It is those adjustments and modification because of that root cause of the injured ankle can lead to other issues in your lower back or neck. Self-care operates in a systemic manner. Well, we might think, okay, I'm kind of tight, feeling stressed. I'm going to do a quick hamstring stretch. Yes, that's going to alleviate some of that tension in the hamstring at that moment. But over time, repeating the same behavior pattern, response patterns. I'm stressed, I'm going to yoga class. I'm stressed, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a quick meal. I'm stressed, let me go ahead and do a quick massage technique. Yes, all healthy. But that continuous cycle, what happens? It can lead to burnout because we're just doing a band-aid on our current mental health. You wanna find the root cause of our mental health, our condition our stressors and develop a pathway from there. Effective self-care should facilitate a deeper understanding of oneself, including behaviors, emotions, and thoughts. This introspection can guide individuals toward their authentic selves, encompassing core values and purpose. Principles such as setting boundaries are, in, are integral to self-care, safeguarding one's time and well-being. Self-compassion is also crucial, especially encountering self-critical thoughts, guilt, or the pursuit of perfection. Ultimately, self-care is rooted in an understanding of core values and serves as a cornerstone for your overall well-being. 
So when redefining self-care for yourself, looking at it from different perspective, just like anything else in life, a strong foundation, a cornerstone should be established. For yourself, some thoughts is to make sure that we think about what are your core values? What is your purpose? Once you identify that, that will be your cornerstone and then you develop your self-care journey from there, just like building a strong house. When you're exercising, you want to have a good base foundation for your body. Next slide, please. A question that many of our fellow colleagues has asked me over the past couple of years. How do we identify which self-care activities work for me? A best practice that I do provide them with is create a self-care toolbox to identify and store your favorite activities and use them when needed. Before you begin and start throwing stuff in your toolbox, again, think holistically, take a step back. Think about and reflect on activities that make you feel good. Again, remember the self-care perspective, such as taking a walk with someone, having that connection, listening to music, or performing a stretch routine with the intent of making you feel healthier, livelier, and better. Consider what's important in your life, such as a healthy relationship, traveling, or perhaps volunteering at your local community shelter. Personalize your toolbox, make it your own. Maybe perhaps you could fill a toolbox with affirmations, items that you hold dear, or something unique that is only to you and you only. And embrace change and be flexible. We all know change is inevitable. You may no longer want to perform that activity that you put in the toolbox. Or you come to realize that that current activity, I need to change it or modify it to make it better. Because I am changing, that activity needs to change along with me. For your toolbox, on, on the slide, there are a few examples of items you can add to your self-care toolbox, such as snack. I do wanna share everyone with eating healthy and unhealthy. If you're really stressed out, your body is in an inflamed state due to cortisol, great hormone that fight or fight response. Yes, it's impacting our well-being. Imagine eating unhealthy, high sugar, saturated fats, Sweet, uh, sugar sweetened beverages, alcohol. That's going to add fire, fuel to the fire, causing your body to be at a higher inflamed state, which in turn can cause mental and physical health problems. Just a thought that I want to share with everyone about the connection between eating unhealthy, our physiological response, and our mental health. Other items on toolbox tools, playlists, journals. Tools could be exercise equipment. Perhaps it's a stretch band, a foam roller, a lacrosse ball, a massage hook stick, a jump rope, or a speed rope. Maybe it's your walking, running shoes, your lifting shoes, your workout gloves. A playlist of your favorite songs. Who, doesn't like, who does not like to listen to their favorite music from time to time? A journal for you to write in. Other items to consider, maybe your favorite book, Treasured photos, photos of your loved ones, family and friends, or photos of your favorite places that you visit and that made you feel happy. Perhaps you have some videos of your favorite moments, podcasts that you like to listen to that help you thrive in your well being. A map of favorite places to hike, whether it's hard copy or digital. Stress balls. I know we have plenty of those during my in person events, but those are great tools to use in case you start to feel a little tension. It's a way to kind of release some of that stress very indirectly. Next slide, please. So as business professionals, huh, what can I do to really help manage my self-care when I'm overloaded with family and professional responsibilities? That's a good question. And there are many activities we can choose from to perform our self-care. Although they require time and commitment, we can scale it down. We can perform self-care bites or activities to perform a short amount of time. That mindful meditation, we just did that for two minutes. And the feedback that I received from that was overwhelmingly positive. Imagine doing that during the day for two minutes, three minutes, or four minutes. Close the door, move all distractions, turn off your phone, turn off your laptop or computer. 
and just sit there and mindfully meditate for a couple of minutes during the day. Perform a stretch routine during the day. If you have a small gap in time, 35 minutes, you don't have to do the total body. Do a few body parts at a time. Perhaps I wanna do my upper body at 11 o'clock in the morning before my 11.15 meeting. And then at three o'clock, I'll do another stretch routine before my 3.15 meeting. Walk around the house if you're working from home, around your building in your workplace, or outside at home or at work if it's safe to do so too. From a toolbox, eat a healthy snack. Something that you should go like easy, grab, and go. Cupcakes, I know Susan, yes, I know you love them. Once in a while, it'll be okay. If you do have something that's sweet and it's just there, how about this? Eat that with a healthy item. Perhaps it's a protein or a fat item to complement the unhealthy versus the healthy. And make sure you sleep seven to nine hours a night. I know that's very difficult. Many of us are already shaking our heads. Oh, that is challenging. I cannot sleep seven, nine hours a night because I have so many things going on. I understand that. If you cannot have that good quality of seven hours to nine hours of sleep a night, think about the opportunity to have a quick micro nap during the day. Whether it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or 20 minutes, if it's safe to do so and you're able to do so. Even on the weekends, when you're not at work, with family time, if there's an opportunity to take a nap, please do so. This will help with your mental and emotional and physical well-being, not only short-term, but long-term too. Another bite is listen to yourself, listen to your favorite song or playlist for a few minutes. And who does not like clutter? So if you have some stuff that you wanna organize around your desk space or workspace, get that time to do so. Do something separate from your current workload. That in itself will help you rejuvenate as you go back to the workload itself. You may come back with more of a mental clarity. Are there any self-care bites here that you see listed or have discussed, they perform, and that are not listed here and you would like to share? Please use the chat box. I myself like to sing. I'm not gonna sing right now because I sound like a pretty horrendous high shrieking cat. Um, it's been told by my friend, family and friends, right? So I do that alone without anyone around because I know that it's not the most pleasant voice to hear, but at least it's good for my own self care. And it kind of helps with my voice too. Next slide, please. Ah, Shirley, thank you. Great cup of tea. Absolutely. Dancing. Yes, Brenda. It's also a great physical activity to do too. So now we're gonna perform, go into our second wellness session. We will do a mobility and stretching routine. So at this time, Kate, please um, stop sharing the screen. And what everyone do is first, if you have any restrictions or limitations, please let me know. I can provide you with an alternate movement if there is restrictions or limitations, okay? Another tip, as you perform these movements and stretches, perform them to your slight discomfort. You should not feel extreme pain, nor you should try to go to that level of extreme pain, okay? So the first one we're gonna do, you can do this either seated or standing, a shoulder roll. So for 10 repetitions or 10 rotations, we'll start forward, up, back, and down, okay? Let's begin, 10 times only, rotations. Just wanna rotate at your own pace. Think of quality, not quantity and speed. Start feeling your neck muscles being engaged, your trapezius, and then as you go back with your shoulders, you're also activating your rhomboids and also your teres minor, teres major. Very small posterior muscles back. If you feel like you can go bigger, go bigger. Once you're done with that 10th rep, let's go ahead and reverse it now. So let's go ahead and bring it down, back, up, and forward. Let's go the opposite direction. I 
Once you're done with a couple more reps, our next one we're gonna do, again, you can be seated or standing. We were gonna do what we call an alternating shoulder flexion and extension. It's gonna go as this. My right arm will go up, that's called flexion. Left arm will go back and that's called extension. Now you wanna go as high up as you can without compromising your posture. So if you start doing this and you lean to the side, trying to compensate, trying to get higher, we don't want that. Or if you're going up and your lower back starts to arch while trying to bring your arm back, again, we don't want that either. Try to stay upright so if things easier for you, you can do so. We're gonna go for a total of 20 reps. Going up and back, that's one rep. And as you alternate, do the exact same thing, okay? What you're looking for is just try to increase shoulder mobility and activation of your front deltoid and your rear deltoid. Take your time with this, 20 reps. Again, you wanna watch that lower back. Don't let it hyperextend or arch as you perform this shoulder mobility movement. Form a couple of more repetitions before we move on to our next movement. Our next movement is something called a neck posture exercise. Now, it's not require anyone trying to rotate their neck or try to crack it on a bone. Please do not do that. Okay. Seated or standing, again, it's up to your discretion. You're going to have one hand placed on the chin. One hand placed on the back of your head. From a side view, it's going to look like this. What you're gonna do from here is gently push your chin in and down. At the same time, the back of your hand, you're gonna gently just pull up on the back of your head. And what you're feeling is a tension or an activation on your neck extensors. Quite frankly, all of us do this. By the time four o'clock, five o'clock hits, at the end of the day, we're hunched over, round the shoulder, hips hurt, back hurts, knees hurt, right? This is a great movement to do before, during, and after work to help realign some of your neck and cervical spine, okay? So we will do this for two reps. We're gonna hold that position for 20 seconds, okay? And on your chin, looking down, hand back of the head, and you're gonna push your chin in, pull your head up. Wanna relax, and we'll do that one more time. Push your chin in and down, pull your head up slightly. Go ahead and slowly relax. Make sure your shoulders are relaxed. Head is now relaxed, okay? Now our next move we're gonna do is, and give me one second, is going to be seated. So I'm gonna to try to move my camera very so slightly. So hopefully we can see the next So our next one we're gonna do is what we call a levator scapula stretch, a stretch. Side neck. Right hand, grab the edge of your chair. Left hand, the right side of your head. And what you want to do is, as you pull your head to the left, make sure you're pulling down on this right shoulder. And as you're doing so, make sure you have a good posture too. So you're not slouching. Again, just like mindful meditation exercise, you're upright. Go ahead and relax. Let go of the chair with your right hand. Your left arm or hand will now grab the side of the chair. Right hand will grab the left side of the head. Turn your head to the right while pulling down simultaneously on the, your chair. Let's 
slowly relax and let go. And then our next movement is going to be what we call a sitting cat camel movement. Sitting on the edge of your chair, make sure your feet are flat on the ground. First thing you wanna do is tuck your tailbone in. And in doing so, reach forward, allowing your back of the body to round. Now from there, go ahead and untuck your tailbone. So go back into neutral position of your tailbone, your pelvic. As you do so, you're gonna go ahead and bring your arms in, squeezing your shoulder blades back. That is one movement. Let's perform this 10 times. So you're gonna go ahead and tuck in, slightly slouch, reach forward, Make sure you breathe in and out. Untuck that tailbone, go back into neutral. Stay upright, pull your arms in, and just squeezing your shoulder blades in. And let's continue that process movement eight more times. We'll go two more repetitions. And let's do one more. Excellent. At that time, everyone should be feeling better. We have one more movement, mobility movement to go through, and it's going to be our trunk rotation. Cross your arms over your chest as so, one hand on the opposite shoulder. When you twist and rotate, your head also moves as well. Couple of tips as you rotate. One, make sure you stay upright. So again, good posture. As you rotate to the right, rotate to as far as you can. Don't try to push it or go past your limitations. And the same thing for the other side, to go left. Again, 20 repetitions, go at your own pace and really feel your muscles being engaged. Getting some blood flow into our spine. Do a couple of more, and that concludes the stretch session. I hope everyone felt just as good with that routine as they did. Back to the presentation, please. Next slide, please. In summary, I really encourage everyone to think about how you approach self-care. Approach it holistically. Yes, Mary, um, we will have a resource tab where I have uploaded the stretches and other handouts, which I'll explain at the end of this presentation. Glad you asked, yes, we'll do. Think of your core values, what they mean to you, and choose activities that will help you thrive in your well-being long-term. As you identify and choose activities, place them in your self-care toolbox, where you can easily find and perform activities throughout the day. Although we are busy, we do need to find time for ourselves to improve our well-being. Whether you have a long extended amount of time or small, many bites of time. Either way, definitely wanna make an intent. Really be more proactive with not only our preventive health, but also self-care too. Next slide, please. Does anyone have any questions at this time? Thoughts? If you click on the bottom of your screen, the resources tab, you will see four different handouts. 
the stretch and mobility routine that we did today is on there, although there's about two movements that we did not get to because of time uh, limitations. The mindful meditation that we performed earlier in this presentation is also on there, the handout, how to perform it step by step. The two other handouts, this is part of your, your nutrition well being. One is a healthy plate from Kaiser. Gives an idea of what should be on your plate and how you portion out your protein, carbs, and fats. On the back part of the handout has a list of healthy foods for your protein, carbs, and fats, your macronutrients. Second handout provides you with visuals and information how to create that plate once you have all your ingredients together. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for taking your time today to watch and join today's wellness presentation. Hope you enjoyed this exercise and the information as much as I did. Uh, yes, Kelly, they're on the bottom of your toolbar in Zoom, the resources tab. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming, everyone.